Should you move your money over here to Europe? Should you invest back in North America? These are questions that we had. Welcome to track us down. We're in the process of investigating all things taxes, investments, and money in Europe. We get a lot of questions from our viewers about those things. There's so much information and misinformation out there, so we thought we'd bring you along. So we're going to meet John from Green Ocean Global. They're a company that helps foreigners with their investments here in Portugal. We are partnering with John to hopefully learn a few things and feel more certain about what we're doing with our investments and our money in Europe. I'm a uh, professional financial advisor, but I'm also a guy who absolutely still love Portugal. I've lived here for three years. I've got three kids. Tell us a little more about you professionally and about Green Ocean Global. For the last 15 years, my whole journey has been helping people to get to the retirement that they, they need that they want. So I help people to kind of build out their cash flow, their post-retirement lifestyle. That means that I have to put all those technical skills that I've developed to work on a problem that is like kind of one click off from right. what I was already doing. What are your credentials for helping people to reach their financial goals if they move to Portugal? I am a certified financial planner. So that's kind of level one, but that's not enough to help you in, in this situation. Because if you're moving to another country, there's obviously going to be like a next level of, of issues that are going to layer on top of those uh, kind of standard domestic issues. And so I've earned a designation that is on top of the CFP. It's the G. FP, it just stands for global, and that kind of increases the scope. So you're no longer just talking about, you know, should I use a regular IRA account or should I use a Roth IRA account? Like there's different tax benefits to people that live in the States that change slightly when you live in another country because you become a tax resident in another country. We're there. Right? <laughs> That's what we're thinking about for sure. So we have tons of questions, so let's get into them. Somebody like us, say, who's in our early 50s, maybe we retired early or we retired abroad, maybe we're digital nomads, is moving abroad a hindrance to investing if we're coming from somewhere like Canada or the United States, or is it an opportunity? It's an opportunity. There's tax uh, incentives for foreigners um, that are in place to ensure that you can have a smooth entry to, to Portugal um, and double tax treaties that ensure that you're not going to get double dipped on taxes anyways. Um, what are some of the apprehensions and landmines that some of the people have reached out to you about as far as moving from Canada or from the United States and thinking about their money, where they're going to move it, how they're going to invest? What are some of the things that they've been asking you that you think it's important for people to know? Yeah, what are mm -hmm. people worried about? What I have found is that they are the same landmines. Really. I mean, what do we hate? We hate death and taxes. I mean, we do need to address taxes because one of the most natural challenges that financial advisors everywhere need to be helping people with is organization. People don't know how to prioritize uh, the, the, the risks that are inherent in doing things with money. So for example, if you're an American and you have a certain amount of money in European institutions, you need to send home your FBAR and your FCAT filings every single year. These are just basic. If you don't file them, you're going to be hit with huge tax penalties. It's part of being organized. And so financial advisors are nothing if they're not just organizers. Every single year, we're having a meeting somewhere near the end of the year to just kind of knock out these basic issues. And knowing that you have somebody that's looking over your shoulder helping you deal with these can be a big deal because you can go about the rest of your life doing all the other things you really want to be doing. Taking your money to Europe with you, should we do it? Well, yeah. But there's a time. The exchange rate has recently gotten to a place where it's an amazing time to do it. And so you have to know that if you don't do it, you might miss a window of opportunity. And, and that's what this is right now. And so how do you go about it? What's the uh, most cost-effective way to do it? I was talking to somebody last week who was paying 2% at their bank every time they wanted to move money here. It can end up being a lot of money. And so is there a better way? I mean, let's face it, technology can be a, an incredible tool if you know how to employ it. That's the job of a good financial advisor is to be really good but for the many different things that sort of overlap. When is a good time for someone to contact a financial advisor such as yourself to start thinking about that if they're thinking of moving to Portugal? Before you come, you want to make sure that you pack your bags, you plan your plans, you, you talk to somebody 
uh, that has not only the expertise, but has maybe been through these things before themselves. And to make sure that you have all the landmines mapped out and that you know what the issues are going to be. But that's only part of this journey. So you want to make sure that you have a good basic blueprint before you cut ties. If you plan before a trip, then you can be really intentional about the things that you're about to do. And so you can be successful on purpose. When people call me after they've moved, it's fine um, because there are so many things that I can help with. But if you can get prepared before you're in the, the thick of the move, then you can create the plan. And then so what about as an American or as a Canadian investing? Should we be investing in Europe or should we be investing in the European stock market? You know, Europeans all want to invest in the U.S. stock market. Like you want to be invested in the most diverse, deepest market in the world. You need to be in the United States. And, and the good thing is, is you still can. So you can keep investing in the United States, even if you're a res resident of Portugal. Residents of Portugal can indeed uh, make investments in the U.S. stock market. That's where I can help. Basically, the European Union doesn't want us investing in mutual funds and in exchange traded funds. Well, they're opening up to that a little bit more recently. Um, and that is the, uh, the better way to get a diversified investment that doesn't require you to have to do a bunch of research on individual stocks. We're quite comfortable with index funds and ETFs, but if mm -hmm. we can only invest back in Canada or for someone who can only invest back in the United States and we can't do index funds anymore or ETFs, what is a way around that if we're, indivi we're investing in individual stocks? Well, you should Google direct indexing. Uh, we are in a moment right now where it's literally free to buy individual stocks. And so it's become almost free to buy enough stocks to create your own index. But if we want to do that, are you the person that we can go to to help form that index, to form that basket of stocks so that we're investing diversely? This is what I do. Yeah, this is 100% what I'm, I've been doing for years and uh, I'm doing more of the time now that I work with Americans and with Canadians in Europe. John, is there a good reason that a Canadian or an American would want to leave their country forever? And what are the pros and cons of doing that? That is a great question. The answer is yes. To do justice to the, uh, to the question, we have to understand the way that the United States taxes income. As a Canadian, you do not have my problem. Um, as a U.S. citizen, I am for life assumed to be on my way back to the United States. So the United States assumes that they're also entitled to all of my tax information forever wherever I go in the world. And so there have been some individuals for whom I've done expatriation studies in which I examine the question of, will it be better for you um, if you could escape the worldwide taxation net of the United States? The answer was yes for a few people. I love the United States of America, but the way that they continue to tax you can become a hindrance um, if you want to structure your worldwide activities in a different way later on. For a Canadian, you have much the same situation as a lot of people do, which is that once you clear out, your national taxation doesn't have to include you all the time after that. You, you, you are a resident, a tax resident of Portugal now, and so you have to report to Portugal. And that's an important distinction because you can do things in a different way now without having to constantly think back, you're gonna come back and snatch a piece of whatever it is that I'm trying to do here. If other people wanna get a hold of you, where can they connect with you? Well, they can connect with me online. They can go to my website, of course. And you should probably use the broker check system. I don't know if you know this, but uh, full-time financial advisors all have a permanent record and that's held by the SEC. Good. So you can go and Google me. Uh, not just so you can find my website, but you can find out what my credentials are on your own. And then you can email me and, um, and set up a time to talk. So one of the things that I'm offering is a 30 minute consultation. Um, I know from experience that it's helpful just to talk to somebody briefly, take you through a look at your investments, make sure that you're ready to make this job in the most advantageous way for you. So we know from our experience that having a chat with John has set our mind at ease for so many questions that we had. And sometimes you don't know what the next question you should ask is, but it comes up in conversation. In 30 minutes, you can feel like you can avoid some of the landmines that you've been worrying you, have been on your mind about moving abroad to Portugal. If you'd like to talk to John and you want to figure out your finances before you move abroad, before you move to Portugal, click our link down below to connect to a 30 minute paid consultation you can go right into Calendly, make a date and time to talk to John. You're going to get so much more information and probably feel a lot better about your move. And as usual, check back in and track us down.